What is Chet Baker doing? Cue the music. Today we're going to talk about what you just heard. The Chet Baker solo on It Could Happen to You. Now on this solo he is singing versus playing trumpet, but still sounds amazing. And what he did in the 7th and 8th bar of his solo is what we're going to talk about today. So in the 7th and 8th bar of It Could Happen to You, there's a minor 2-5 going on. And it's a minor 2-5 going to the 2. Just a quick review, a minor 2-5 is a half diminished chord, 1 flat 3 flat 5 flat 7. Okay, so that's a half diminished chord going to a five altered chord of some sort. It doesn't matter how you alter it. Um, you might see a flat nine on there. That's the typical kind of sound you might hear. Um, but it, either way, it's it's a it's a half diminished chord to a dominant chord of altered dominant chord to a minor tonic. And just so you guys know. Chet does this version of It Could Happen To You in G concert. Normally, It Could Happen To You is played, I think the typical key is E flat concert, but he decides to do it in G. I'm sure it's something with his voice or something. I don't know, but it sounds amazing either way. So what he's doing here, B concert, all right? So B concert, half diminished, seven, to E, altered seven, to A minor, okay? And, he starts this line on four. Okay, so what you just heard was Chet Baker, and he was taking a solo on It Could Happen to You. Now, he's playing this version of It Could Happen to You in G concert. Normally, I think it's played in E flat concert. So if you're trying to read it from iReelBook or um, or any other type of uh, book, or you're, you're playing it by ear from a different recording, you may notice that it's it's not the typical key, but I, I think uh, I think it's still it's still all of this still applies because it's a great tune. Um, it's a great version of the tune, so definitely check it out. His solo is unbelievable, and it's just it's really really tastefully done. There's very it's mostly diatonic. It's a great one to learn if you if you're looking to get a get a good tune to transcribe under your belt and to kind of get your ears going. It's just a beautiful tune. So. Check that one out. But what we're what we're gonna discuss here in in detail is the line that he does that you just heard, okay? And that is let's hear it one more time. Uh, here we go. Unbelievable. Right. So. It doesn't matter if your voice isn't as angelic as my voice. Kidding. If you want to learn to transcribe something or you want to get something in your ear, you should sing it. Get it in your ear and then play it. So I'm going to go ahead and start start describing what, what he's doing here. So this happens in the 7th and 8th bar of the tune. And in the 7th and 8th bar of the tune, there's a minor 2-5 chord progression happening. So a minor, just a quick review, a minor 2-5 chord progression is a minor 7 flat 5, also known as a half diminished chord into a five altered chord. Now it doesn't matter how that chord is altered, but it's a five, it's a dominant five chord that has alterations to it, whether it be a flat nine, flat 13, both of them, whatever, doesn't matter. And then that's going into a one tonic, a one minor tonic, excuse me. Yeah, it's going into a one minor chord and that's kind of takes over as the, as the tonic in that chord center, okay? How I'm gonna explain this today, I'm gonna explain a lot of this in numbers to try to, to try to get you thinking more in numbers, which will help your transcribing, which we'll talk about in a second. Using numbers in a, in a key center of A minor, the, the altered chord we were talking about is E7, altered. So this line starts on the five of the five chord, okay? I'm thinking of it from the five chord, just so we don't have to use a bunch of different numbers because of the two, because of the five, okay? So that's the reasoning I'm doing that. However you think of it, is not wrong. It's just the way that you think of it and the way that you can recall it and the way that you can get it into your ear. This is this is just the way to get it into your ear. Eventually, you won't be thinking about, oh, I need to play, start this line on the five of a five chord right here and in, in this song. Like that's, that's not what's happening here. This is solely for learning 
how to learn this line and get it into your ear. You'll eventually get to a point where you're just gonna play this line naturally because your ears are gonna be familiar with this chord progression and then it'll just come out. So we're gonna start on the five of the five chord. So if we're talking E7 altered, the five of the, of the E7 is a B. So we're starting this on B concert. From there, you can just think of it as just, it's, it's very scalar, scalar? I always struggle with that, scalar, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can say five and then you can say flat six it goes back down to the five, it goes to the four, it goes to the three, and then it goes up a diminished seventh. But a diminished seventh in on an altered is three, five, seven, excuse me, three, five, flat seven, and flat nine. That makes a diminished seventh chord. And then it just resolves from that flat nine, it resolves right down to the one of the dominant chord which in this case is E concert. Try using that as a way to start transcribing into other keys. You transcribe this into all the other keys, you have minor two five language in every key. That sounds really nice. It's, it, and it's, it's really not that tough of a line to play, but you can see that even though it's an easier line, it placed in the right, in the, in the right way, in the right context, it has so much value. So let's, let's do that real quick. I'm just gonna pick a random key. I'm gonna pick concert B flat, and which I think will be a, an easier key for most of most of you. So let's do concert B flat. Let's say B flat seven altered, and let's just do that do that uh, formula we just came up with. So we got five flat six, five four three, five flat seven, flat nine. Then we resolve to the one. So here, let's try this. Okay, so that's the same thing, and if we speed it up, one, two, three, four, one. It's a nice line, and it's it's a great way to also start an idea that you may have. You can use this to start your idea. You can use it to end your idea. Let's say you play an idea, and you want to use this as a as a way to resolve your line. Totally, you can do anything you want. There's no, there are no wrong notes. I think Miles Davis said that once, but there are no wrong ways to practice how you want to get better. I mean, it's it's just up to you. I would definitely say play it slowly so you can hear it get it into your ears. Don't just try to play everything double time and you know, and just and drive yourself mad by making mistakes. Just play it nice and slow. Get it in your ear. Maybe pick a couple keys to practice at first and then maybe move to a couple more the next day. And maybe you're great at transcribing, so you could probably you can get them all transcribed in 10 minutes, you know? I mean, just depends on what level you're at. Doesn't doesn't matter. Whatever level you're at, just just keep keep sticking with it and you're doing great. So don't worry about don't worry about that. I hope you found this very helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe down there or, or wherever. Probably that way, I'm guessing. But anyways, I'm Chris G from Positively Progressing. I hope you enjoyed this and until next time. Always positive, always progressing. Later.